floods in Europe, wildfires in California, hurricanes in the Caribbean. Every other week, we're inundated with images of extreme weather events caused by climate change. And according to the latest IPCC report, things will only get worse unless concrete action is taken now. The bad news is that the damage uh, is already being done. The world will warm by 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040. And that it means that there will be much more extreme uh, weather that might result in floods or even uh, fires. And it means also that in terms of strategies, adaptation would be key. The good news uh, is also that this whole uh, temperature change or global warming above 1.5 degrees can actually be managed if all of us uh, reach net zero by 2050. But are such targets feasible? Some experts say a rapid response to deal with the crisis is possible because we've done it before. In 1985, scientists discovered that chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, from aerosols and refrigerators were damaging the ozone layer. Just two years later, an international treaty was in place that cut the use of CFCs in half. Three years later, in 1990, the Montreal Protocol was strengthened to ban the use of CFCs altogether. Governments, businesses and consumers banded together and solved that crisis. What can be done, um, at least from the corporate side, is take sustainability seriously. Uh, it's not going to go away and there are business opportunities of note, especially in you know, the renewable sector. If you are an early adopter of technology in this sense, you can stand to benefit from this. There's a lot of uh, push these days, especially from younger people, younger consumers towards green sort of products. They realize that um, the world is going to change to a level where they will be impacted severely and they want to have their own, you know, to take action in their own little way. The good news is that sustainability is no longer on the sidelines, but front and centre in boardrooms all over the world. The challenge is to make sure that it's not just lip service. We need quick, fast and nimble action. And indeed, business leaders and investors are really in the driving seat and have to set the example. The legacy ways of doing business will have to be challenged and changed. Business as usual just cannot happen anymore. Every business is going to have to change. And specifically here in Singapore, where, for example, we're very much dependent on our supply chains involving the marine and aviation industries. Each of those are high intense, intensity uh, carbon uh, emitters. And with changes that those industries are going to have to go through, it will have implications right across Singapore business. Sustainability consultancy Green A has worked with major companies to maximize the value of going green. Using sustainable solutions, its clients have been able to save an average of 30% of their energy use. One client, DBS, plans to convert an existing office building in Newton into a zero energy building, saving the 845,000 kilowatt hours of energy it currently uses. Sustainable solutions can save 50% off water usage and, in some cases, more. HP's new facility in Singapore is projected to use 78% less potable water than a comparable non-green building. Green A says their clients are often surprised at the amount of cost savings they accrue through making their operations sustainable. The biggest change I think for the last 12 years I noticed is people are more informed about sustainability issues. Before it's just a, your LED lights and your solar panel I should say, but now they are more informed about the things that goes into the building, how we design the building, the process, and of course educated by the customer as well. There's more demand for people who want green products. Investors also have an important role to play in the sustainability challenge retail investors can actually uh, invest alongside institutional investors who have a say and ability to engage with big corporations that are actually very uh, carbon intensive and can bring about change. 
And also, I think investors should also reward uh, companies that are scoring very well on the ESG front, and also especially companies that are bringing about climate change technologies or even carbon capture technologies. Investors also should actually start to think and even use sophisticated tools to stress test their portfolios in case uh, climate temperature increase by more than 1.5 degrees or even higher and, and assess what's the impact on their portfolios. Experts also point to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic as a precursor to the climate risks that may come to pass. COVID, I think, has is, is been an extremely timely lesson for the world to be able to really bring to, bring to the fore the fact that climate, another systemic risk, has to be addressed collectively. The good news is that it's not too late. Uh, I'm of the opinion and the belief, actually, that it's not too late. If we see more countries follow the ambition of uh, places like China or places like the European Union, we can pass through that uh, window of opportunity to keep the bad impacts of climate change to a minimum.